What's happening guys, Landon here with LMR.com. In this video, I'll be installing the Ford Performance Track Cow for the 2013 to 2014 Mustang GTs, as well as dynoing the car to see how much power we can make with this kit. As far as aftermarket tuning is concerned, the biggest back and forth debate is peak power and drivability. Well, this Track Cow from Ford Performance provides the best of both worlds. The expert engineers at Ford have put together a simple tuning package that includes a drop-in high flow filter and calibration. Their track cow provides an increase in both horsepower and torque, all while sustaining excellent drivability. Characteristics of the calibration include ignition timing, wide open throttle fuel mapping, increased throttle response, accelerator pedal mapping, and cooling fan activation temps. Not only does the track cow add power and torque, but it also contains exclusive calibration features designed for track use and are derived from the same software algorithms and features employed in Ford Performance race cars, such as the Boss 302R, Boss 302S, and the Cobra Jet. Those features include a driver adjustable pit lane speed control, driver adjustable two-step rev limiter, and the Lopi Idle we've all come to appreciate from the twin independent variable cam timing found in the Coyote engines. Ford engineers recorded upwards of 60 foot-pounds of torque at 1500 RPMs and peak gains of 16 horsepower and seven foot-pounds of torque on 93 octane fuel. Now those results were based off of average testing and of course they were done on an engine dyno. Whenever you order your track cow package, you'll receive the high flow filter and voucher number. Once you set up an online account and redeem the voucher, Ford Performance will then mail you the Pro Cal tuner. As far as fitment is concerned, the track cow kit will only work with 2013 and 2014 Mustang GTs equipped with the manual transmission. This 2013 manual GT is equipped with 373 rear end gears and 19 inch Brembo wheels. It's bone stock all the way down to the paper air filter and it even has 123,000 miles on the odometer. So with all that good stuff out of the way, what do you say we turn the rollers and see what this car can make in stock trim? Our baseline pull was made in fifth gear for a one-to-one -one ratio and the car did have 93 octane fuel in the tank. This 2013 made 379 horsepower at 6,200 RPMs and 375 foot-pounds of torque at 4,200 RPMs. Now that we have a solid baseline, it's time to install our high flow filter and flash the PCM with the ProCal tool. First things first, Follow the instructions on the voucher ID to register your unique ID. Once you complete the online registration, your ProCal tool should arrive within one to two business days. When it does arrive and you open the box, you'll find the ProCal tool, SD card, OBD2 connector, and detailed instructions. Go ahead and pop the hood and locate the factory air box. Release the small red tab on the mass airflow sensor connection and then depress the clip to release it from the sensor. Remove the sound tube grommet from the air box if yours is still equipped. Release both plastic retainers on the top of the air box lid. Carefully lift up on the lid and remove the factory paper filter. Install the high flow filter into the air box. Reposition the lid and then engage each retaining clip. Reinstall the sound tube grommet. Reconnect the mass airflow connection and engage the red locking clip. You can now close the hood. Roll back the rubber boot from the lower portion of the ProCal to expose the memory card socket. Insert the memory card into the socket with the face of the card facing the same direction as the display screen on the ProCal. Reposition the rubber boot. Insert the OBD2 connector into the top of the ProCal. Ensure that it is fully seated and then finger tighten the thumb screws. From inside of the vehicle, locate the DLC or diagnostic link connector beneath the driver's side dashboard. Hold down the enter button on the ProCal while inserting the OBD2 connector in the DLC, then let go of the enter button. At this time, the tool will update itself with the software from the memory card. Do not continue to the next step until the red arrow light goes out and a menu appears reading programming, diagnostics, setup. Now you can insert the key and turn it to the on position, but do not start the car. Use the down arrow button 
to highlight diagnostics and press enter. Then highlight read DTCs and press enter. Any existing trouble codes must be resolved prior to proceeding with the installation of your performance calibration. If codes are present, write them down and then contact Ford Performance for assistance with a resolution. Press the Escape button to return to the previous menu. From the main screen, select Programming, then Performance Cal. Read the message on the screen and then press Enter. The Pro Cal will prompt for key off. Go ahead and do so and then press enter. Turn the key to the on position again, but do not start the car. At this time, a voltage warning will appear. It is in your best interest to plug in a battery charger as the programming process can take upwards of 20 minutes to complete. Once the programming begins, the dash will go dark and several alarms will go off. This is completely normal. Do not disconnect the tool or turn the key off while the car is being programmed. Once the display shows update complete, turn the key to the off position as prompted. Wait at least 15 seconds, then turn the key back to the on position, of course, without starting the car. A DTC clearing menu will appear. Press enter to begin. Wait for process complete to show on the screen and press enter one more time. The ProCal screen should return to the main menu and the dash should appear as normal. Programming is now complete. Reference the instructions to change rear end gear ratio, tire size, and to adjust octane. Our car is bone stock, so there is no need to adjust any of these parameters. To adjust the launch control set point, the engine must be running, the vehicle must be stationary, and the brake pedal must be depressed. Hold down the plus set speed control button for two seconds to enter set mode. The tack will sweep and then return to the current set point to indicate that the set mode has been entered. Use the plus set and minus set buttons to select the desired launch speed in increments of 100 RPM. Once the desired launch speed is shown on the tack, press the on button to store the new value. The tack will sweep and pause briefly at the set point before returning to normal operation. To completely disable launch control, re-enter the set mode and adjust the set point to its maximum value. Before using this feature, ensure that the traction control is off to avoid bogging the engine. Never use this feature in any other gear other than first. To adjust the speed set point for the pit lane speed control feature, the engine must be running, the vehicle must be stationary, and the brake pedal must be depressed. Hold down the minus set speed control button for two seconds to enter the set mode. The speedo will sweep to indicate that the set mode has been entered. Use the plus set and minus set buttons to select the desired speed limit from 28 miles per hour to 85 miles per hour. Once the desired speed limit is shown on the speedo, press the on button to store the new value. The speedo will sweep and pause briefly at the set point before returning to normal operation. To activate the pit lane speed control feature, press the RSM button twice within one second. The speed control indicator light on the dash will flash green to indicate that the pit lane speed control has been activated. To deactivate the pit lane speed control, press the RSM button once. Be aware if the accelerator pedal is near wide open, when this feature is deactivated, the vehicle can accelerate rapidly. For low B idle to be enabled, three conditions must first be met. 130 seconds must have elapsed since the engine cooling temperature reached 170 degrees Fahrenheit while the engine is running. There must not be any detected failures or engine control related sensors or actuators. And finally, the engine must not currently be idling. This simply means to rev it up in neutral or drive away once the other conditions have been met. To disable all the track cal features, including Lopi Idle, hold down the off button while starting the engine and continue to hold it down for at least five seconds after the engine starts running. The tack will sweep, indicating that the track cal features are now disabled. This is required every time you start the vehicle if you would like the features to be disabled. All right, guys, now that we have all the cool features covered, let's spin the dyno over one more time and see what we can make. With the track cal tune and 93 octane fuel, our 2013 GT ended up making 394 horsepower at 6,300 RPMs and 388 foot-pounds of torque at 4,200 RPMs. That's good for peak gains of 15 horsepower and 13 foot-pounds of torque. There was even a curve increase of 30 plus foot-pounds of torque in the lower RPM range, which is really where you're going to feel the difference between the track cal tune and of course a factory calibration. 
Wrapping everything up here, fellas, this kit was absolutely money well spent. The drivability, features, and performance that you get from this kit is well worth the cash. Visiting both the drag strip and the road courses, the track cow features are really going to be a nice touch, especially with the added horsepower and torque. To see more how-to and review videos covering industry-leading products, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and don't forget to turn on notifications. While you're at it, check out our other videos, and don't forget to shop LMR.com for all things 1979 to present Mustang, and of course, SVT Lite.